Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all manner of strange and unusual literature that I have found in my travels. It is Poetry Thursday, a beautiful day where at least once, one day out of the week, I talk about the marvelous poetry that exists in the world, and uh, I do try to find some of the more stranger poetry, uh, some of the more unusual stuff, but, you know, uh, that's not the real emphasis of Poetry Thursday. Uh, sometimes I'll just talk about, you know, regular poetry. Uh, uh, but that's, that's probably not the case with uh, the poem that I'm going to read for today. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit unusual. I wouldn't call it 100% strange, uh, but you know we're we're not grading weirdness on a scale from one to ten. We're just we're just saying, hey, that's unusual. That's weird, you know. Um, but yeah. So, um, but before I get to that, I do want to take care of a little little bit of other business, and that I probably won't have a um, a video this week for a book review. Um, the book that I'm talking about this week, uh, or in the, my next book review, will be on House of Leaves. And it's taking much longer than expected to read the book. It's 700 plus pages long. And Mark Daniel Lusky, the writer, uses every single one of those pages and doesn't let up. And it's, it's a heifer of a book. And it's just, oh my goodness, there's so much in it. And so yeah, it's taking, it's a bit of a challenging book. Like, I haven't been challenged by a book like this since I can't remember when. East of Eden is a good example of that. Uh, I'd also say um, Moby Dick is, a, is another good example. But Moby Dick was, it was more of a just struggle bus getting through just because um, Herman Melville really liked to talk about whale biology. And so uh, it, it feels like a different challenge, but like, you know... There's so much within this book, and I'll talk more about that when I get to the book review, but I just wanted to highlight how that's going to be coming out later for those that, that are interested. Moving back to the topic at hand, Poetry Thursday. Today I wanted to talk about uh, a poem that is about love, or at least on the surface it seems about love. Uh, I am talking about uh, Kiss by Endrin Amir Thaniyagam. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, I looked it up, and uh, I think um, I believe I'm, I'm pronouncing that right. Um, uh, but but who is Ami uh, Indran Amir Thaniyagam? Uh, he is a Sri Lankan poet who has lived all around the world. Uh, he um, was born in the '60s, I think, uh, and has written up until today. Even uh, I believe he had a, a recent uh, collection of poetry published. Uh, in the past 10 years, um, uh, and he's um, a widely celebrated poet as well. Uh, he has, uh, he's Sri Lankan, um, and he's also Tamil, uh, which is an ethnicity uh, that has existed in Sri Lanka since, um, for thousands of years even, uh, the, the Tamil kings, um, as they were known, uh, pretty much, like, uh, controlled the trade routes um, in, in, in near southern India and uh, uh, pretty much controlled the Indian Ocean until uh, the, the Dutch and the British came along. Um, so I feel like that's an, that's an important thing to address, um, the, the colonization and how that uh, affected uh, India. Uh, because, or uh, not just India, but Sri Lanka, because uh, Sri Lanka was um, pretty much under various colonial rule until the 1960s uh, when it gained independence as so many colonized nations did. Uh, so yeah, so, um, uh, I'm talking about Indran Amir Thaniyagam today and his poem Kiss. Uh, so allow me uh, to read it and then I'll discuss a little bit about what I saw in it and then we will move on from there. Here is Kiss. Kissing your lips, I try to forget roses or the fruit of palmyra trees, sweet and strong. Tongue lolling upon tongue, heart beating against heart beating. These are my words, signifying our human bodies, which poetry does not capture. The absolute desire I have to kiss your lips. On this hot and sunny afternoon, 
I do not know how much longer I can walk about the garden kissing roses or perambulate the toddy tavern of my dreams where black faces and white toddy mix and black and white memories of Jaffna Sri Lanka, my Tamil countrymen far away on an island across the sea. Far away and far away the palmyra fruit and your lips to drink toddy now, to kiss your rosy lips now, to uproot the roses in my garden and offer them upon my tongue now. To fly to Sri Lanka and grab the last fruit on the tree before history throws the tamils into the sea as it is said it will do. Before all this and everything else, before the apocalypse, I do so sincerely wish, though my heart may not, or though my words may not fit, to rest my head in your hair and kiss your lips. So that was Kiss by Amir Thanayagam. Uh, Indrin Amir Thanayagam. Uh, it's a pretty wonderful, little touching poem about how much uh, someone wants to be, like, wants to kiss somebody. Uh, thinking about those lips lusting after the beauty, uh, so to speak. Um, there's a lot of beautiful, um, beautiful words that Indrin uses. Um, specifically, the absolute desire I have to kiss your lips on this hot and sunny afternoon. And you can just picture, like, it, it might be, like, very humid outside, but, like, you, you just see the, the person that you love, and you see their lips, and you're like, wow, like, <laughs> our body's connected, and, and in a kiss, it would just be so warm and, and like, so refreshing and, and so beautiful. And I think uh, that's, like, that's a very beautiful line that he, that he, that he has there. Like, you're so... It's it, it it's a weird way to phrase like how you, how you want someone by by focusing especially on one specific body part the lips, but I think um, Indrin pulls it off here uh, by making uh, by making it sound very beautiful and and very like desirable. And then this specific verse where he says far and far far away and far away the palmyra fruit and your lips to drink toddy now to kiss your rosy lips now to uproot the roses in my garden and offer them upon my tongue now. So what I get there, uh, toddy is, a, is an alcoholic beverage. It could also be tea. It really depends on uh, where, where you're at. So like what I get when I read that is I get like just relaxing in the shade by, by the palmyra tree, which is native to Sri Lanka, um, native to Southeast Asia. And just relaxing by the uh, by the tree in the shade, drinking some tea and being next to your lover and and kissing them, and it's a beautiful romantic afternoon, and it's 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 a wonderful it's a wonderful like vision in my head. Um, I I want to be there right now, you know. It's a it's a wonderful time. However, um, that's that's on the surface. You can kind of see it, but if you look much deeper, you you get the sense that maybe he's not talking about a lover. Maybe like he's trying to get your focus on other things. He constantly references the palmyra tree, which is native to Sri Lanka. He references Jaffna, a uh, a place in Sri Lanka, a city in Sri Lanka that has been kind of torn apart uh, by. Um, decades of, of civil war uh, between the uh, the federal uh, Sri Lankan army and the Ta Tamil Liberation Front. Uh, so um, you you get um, he he's trying to raise your awareness about something there. He also says um, a, there's a verse here to fly to Sri Lanka and grab the last fruit on the tree before history throws the Tamils into the sea as it said it will do, which is very apocalyptic and like in the next verse he references the apocalypse um like throwing the tamils into the sea and so like what is the situation with the uh the tamils in sri lanka it, it's it's something that to really get you to think uh and i actually had to look this up and it turns out yeah again there's a there was a civil war brewing and for the longest time like the the tamils even though they were native to the to sri lanka and they spent years there. Uh, they were often subjected to uh, discrimination, discriminatory laws, and and unfair practices against their ethnicity. Uh, and despite their liberation efforts, um, it kind of failed multiple times. And up until 2008, like they were defeated. Um, the in 2008, the the war ended. They 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 surrendered. 
Uh, and it's largely been speculated that um, the number of Tamils, uh, Tamil ind individuals, um, like they, it, it's in the thousands of who, who have died over the years. And so it, it you could argue that it's, it's, a, it's kind of a genocide uh, uh, and how um, life has kind of been rough for Tamil individuals. So it really seems like to to uh, Indran here that like the, the Tamils are going to be thrown into the sea. They're going to be lost to time, and it's they're not going to be remembered as well uh, because there's not going to be much of a record of them. It's it's since changed. Like the country is on the up and up, but um, you, you you can't get past all those people dying. Like that's that's terrible. But as as you can see, like on the surface, it may be about a kiss. It may be about being with one you love, but clearly he's thinking about something else. His mind is preoccupied with thoughts of a civil war, of a of a tough time, of longing to be with his countrymen. Uh, and maybe, maybe if, if you can interpret this as uh, he wants to kiss, he wants to be with Sri Lanka uh, rather than being abroad as as he was. Uh, so it, it it could be that he's not talking literally about being with a lover he's talking about being with his country that he loves i think it's a i think it's a pretty decent poem and um i recommend that you can find it if you if you can find it um i'll put a link to it in the description go ahead and read it and uh in the comments below tell me what you thought tell me if you think my interpretation is spot on or if you um if you have a different view i would love to hear from you uh um, otherwise, uh, don't forget to like, share, um, and subscribe so that uh, other people may hear about this beautiful poetry and may one day read my, uh, my review or listen to my review of House of Leaves, which is going to be fiery. Um, otherwise, you know, go read more poetry. It's Poetry Thursday. Enjoy the, uh, the beautiful poetry that exists in the world. Otherwise, I bid you pleasant time in your weird travels and goodbye.